Hi, check this out. I stumbled across the most remarkable bargain on AliExpress. I was just, uh, I wasn't like searching, I was just on there. Well, it popped up with what uh, looked like a multimeter at uh, just at first casual glance, and then I realized, no, that's not a multimeter. It's a multifunction process calibrator. And if you don't know the uh, difference, A, it does work like a normal multimeter, but it actually outputs precision voltage and current. It actually sources voltage and current designed to, for like 4 to 20 milliamp uh, current loop testing, other process uh, control testing and stuff like that. And this is a 0.02% class instrument. Not the actual multimeter, but the source uh, part of it, the voltage and current source into, you know, 20 odd volts and, uh, you know, 20 something odd milliamps. And it can do that with 0.02% plus four digits, they're the specs, I'll show them up here now. It's a cheap, no name, it literally is a no name process calibrator. It's got no model number, no nothing. But the remarkable thing about this was, it was eight dollars and seventy something cents, Yankee dollars, delivered, delivered from AliExpress in China, I thought this has to be a mistake. There's no way you can build and sell a 0.02% class um, source or uh, measure unit, uh, like a multimeter, for eight bucks. I mean, we're familiar with $2 multimeters, the Harbor Freight ones, and the sub $10 multimeters and all that. That's fine, and that's a multimeter, but this this requires precision components to get 0.02%. I'm absolutely flabbergasted, so I ordered one and I got it. So $8.70 US delivered. You can actually choose for like a DHL delivery, which is a lot more. So I thought this store, that's AliExpress store I was on, has to have gotten this wrong. No, sure enough, since then, I have found like a, a dozen different AliExpress stores that sell it for sub $10. But this exact same meter under its actual brand name, which is AMO, AMO meter. But the model number for this is actually the AMPX1. And you can buy this on eBay for like well over 200 US dollars. And that's the kind of price you'd expect for a like a one hung low brand, no namer, precision process calibrator. Because if you go buy a fluke or something, they're, you know, bordering on a thousand dollars or whatever. Now you'll see that under the bezel here, it looks like they've actually scraped off the model number there and possibly down on this bottom part of the window too and all of the sellers that are selling this literally no name unit it looks like that they've just scraped off the amo brand and the model number so i really don't know if this is some sort of like bulk buy that fell off the back of a truck or whatever it is so why a whole bunch of sellers have this meter for under 10 US dollars, I don't know. And then we'll tear it down to see if it actually has real brand name precision parts in it to get the 0.02% plus minus four digit spec. By the way, the multimeter on this is just, it's its very ordinary. The specs for that are just, meh, you know, half a percent class, but it's nothing special. So you wouldn't buy this for the multimeter. You're buying this because it can source precision current and precision voltage. And at this sort of price, you just order two so that you can compare them against each other and use it as like a little voltage and current standard. Uh, Houston, I found the first problem. <laughs> the range, it's locked up. Wah, 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 wah. So let's turn it off. And it does some weird thing when you turn it off and measure too. There's some display thing. Anyway, look, it works, so. Yeah, firmware's not the greatest quality. Anyway, feeding in uh, one volt, it, it's okay. But as I said, the specs are very ordinary for a multimeter. So you wouldn't buy it as a meter, but it seems to be within specs. So it's okay. And that's one milliamp. Good enough for Australia. Oh, it's a little bit low there, but you know, it is it is what it is. Yeah, that's 10K, meh. 1K, meh. <laughs> By the way, if you want to see the jacks down in there, they're just your typical split. It's an eight buck meter. Um, anyway, we're going to test out the source. This is what we're really interested in. It doesn't use the blackjack. It actually uses the positive 
uh, jack as the negative and the positive milliamps terminal as the positive. Oh, by the way, this 24 volts puts 23. That's just like a power source. So you just use it for powering stuff. It could be um, ICP vibration sensors or anything like that. You know, right? This is actually reading voltage. This will actually get a higher precision. Actually, let me try that first. Oh, again, the Sutton dodgy. You see? Input, in, input turned off there. There's Sutton. So, whoa, hello, McFly. That range switch is a bit dodgy, brothers. There we go. Bang on. We get greater precision on measurement, not on the regular multimeter uh, part of it down here, but on the actual uh, process calibrator side of things because it can read and source. There we go. 10 volts, 100 milli. It, it only, it's only got a fixed uh, range, so. And the current is bang on. 10 milliamps, look at that. Oh, one least significant digit in it. Let's not quibble over that. Yeah, it looks like 24, it'll measure. 25, nope, so there you go, it tops out there. Yeah, the, um, the, the spec isn't too shabby there at all. Anyway, what we wanna do is switch this to output, and instead of reading the input, it will now output a voltage on those terminals. So we can just jump up like that. Bingo, oh, two, what? Did, no, where's my voltage? Hello, McFly. Okay, I, I, I just, just wiggling the leads there. Contact problems? Can hear an internal relay switch, output. Anyway, check it out. It's bang on. That's not too bad at all. Wow, That's, that looks like it's well within spec. 0.02% because one volt times 0.02% would expect there, that to be uh, maximum uh, plus minus 200 microvolts, not including the four counts as part of the spec. So that is well within spec. Pretty impressed by this. Yep, that's not too shabby at all. It's a bit of noise on there. We might actually scope the output later. So uh, as you can see, wow, remember this is eight US dollars, nine US dollars delivered. This is insane. So our maximum is 10 volts there. That is bang on. Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, that's the maximum current there, 23. We'll put on that 24 volt source. Yeah, 27 milliamps is the maximum uh, source current there. Let's test the current now. Change it to output. Yeah, microamps, that's fine. Oh, one milliamp. There we go, oh, slow this thing down. Right, so one milliamp there, the spec is 0.2% for both voltage and current, but for current, it's plus two, four digits. For voltage, it's plus two digits for uh, reading. It averages out to within spec, but there's it's a little bit noisy there, so we'll have to uh, check that later. But it's basically, you know, you could say that's pretty much bang on that they don't give you, you know, any serious specs over the range and linearity and all that sort of jazz, right? But pretty darn close to spot on. Of course, there's a bit of discrepancy between my uh, two seven and a half digit meters here because current's not as good as accuracy. Well, you could argue for your 200 US dollars, it's meh, but how can they make this thing and sell it for under 10 US dollars? You've got to have precision parts. Is there a new source for uh, some no-name Asian sourced voltage reference plus precision resistors and stuff like that? Maybe. I don't know. Let's take it apart. Anyway, before we do that, it is quite a large unit. 121 GW. So, you know, it's quite a large physical unit, but that's uh, similar to other uh, process calibrators on the market. That's just what they look like. There's a tilting bale. That's okay. It's like whatever. And it's got like a real mechanical clunking power switch on the thing and uh, a battery compartment with some fuses. And it's got USB port on the top. Um, yeah. How does it meet uh, compliance, safety compliance with external USB? That'd have to be isolated. Powered from uh, six AAA batteries, which you do not get. Does not come with any batteries at all. And two 3AG fuses here in, in their own uh, compartments. Uh, ceramic jobbies, none of that glass rubbish. And curiously, there's a little trimmer pot down in there. I'm not sure what the, I've never seen a trimmer pot accessible within there before. I have no idea what that does. Obviously the manual's hopeless. It doesn't tell you anything. And for those playing along at home, these are the leads we get with it. Meh, whatever. But you get some big uh, croc clips with it there. You get a USB lead. No less than four spare ceramic fuses. Nice. And that's two 10 amp jobs and two uh, half amp jobs. 
All right, let's open this thing up and have a squeeze. Hello. And we're in like Flynn. That looks neat and tidy, doesn't it? Wow, okay, we've got our shield in up here. Um, I like that the uh, battery contacts are just going down to the pads there. And, oh, hang on. That's the USB. Uh, Beulah? Beulah? It's supposed to have USB interface because it does come, sorry, it does come with a USB stick which contains the manuals and some Windows software as well. We've only got two wires. Well, there you go. That didn't make sense with just the two wires. Look at this. A, a complete USB isolation board. A little lead driver. That's what this is. With the big cutout in there. Look at this. They've done that right. I don't know what that part is there. That, that'll just be a serial jobby, would it? I can't read that on my camcorder. That is great. Anyway, the front end down here. We've got a, a little glass field. Fuse jobby down there, that's a bit weird. Anyway, a couple of PTCs, little piss weak ones. A couple of uh, diodes are here, over here. No mobs, nothing else, nothing special. These would be your relays down here. We can't see those, we have to take the board out. Model number, the AMPX1, 2015. Crow. Anyway, let me take a high res photo and we'll go through this thing. Hold on to your hat, inside this thing, there's our contacts, pretty par for the course. And the relays there, damn, are they Matsushitas? They're, they're, they're Japanese relays. Wow. Anyway, little piddly context down there on our range switch. It is what it is. And uh, not much else. Is there anything under that? No, it looks like there's nothing of note on the bottom side. All right, let's take a look at the PCB. There's two things we want to know about this. One is what voltage reference does it actually use? Is it some one hung low brand? Is it a, a proper known brand if it is? Oh, and the other parts on here, how are they doing it for this sort of cost? 0.02% class instrument source and measure the input side here as i said like nothing particularly uh stand out -y. chipset right off the bat looks like a genuine microchip part doesn't look like a ripoff pick 16f 1947 and if we go over to lcsc sure enough they have it in stock these are like asian -y prices even in 12,000 quantity it's still that's a dollar 26 just for the processor CS7721. We can't seem to find a data sheet. An EV blog forum always turns up on the EV blog forum. Anyway, used in multimeters. Looks like it's found in other multimeters. No surprise there whatsoever because it's got to have a generic cheap yep, <laughs> price. Zero. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> anyway, it's just a multimeter chipset. Meh. And then we've got a Holtec uh, LCD driver HT1621. That'll, that'll cost about 50 cents. Oh, it's off. That's cheap as chips. 25 cents in 12,000 quantity. But still, you know, it's all starting to add up. And typical Asian uh, manufacturing uh, LCD driver. We use one in the new uh, micro supply. Part of this would be a, a 24 volt voltage uh, generation up here. So this looks like a genuine Maxim Max 629. That's going to cost a penny. Whoa. <laughs> DC to DC converter step up. $10. Wow, yep, right there. That chip alone, if you buy it from the regular sources, that costs more than this entire meter. So obviously they're getting those surplus from the Shenzhen market, store at the Shenzhen market. They're getting reels and reels of that. But And that looks like a genuine Maxim. I, I mean, it could be a fakey, but they wouldn't be paying, you know, five or ten bucks a chip. Finding there's a TI part over here. What does this do? Bingo, there's our analog to digital converter. That's, it looks like our 24-bit ADC, which is doing our measurement for the source measure. Well, and not the source, but for the measure part of it. Um, once again, this is LCSC price. This is a buck 66. This looks like a genuine TI part. Not sure what this part here is next to it. That looks like an analog devices jobby. Analog devices, OP2976. You're going to pay for that. TI parts, another TI part down here. Like I thought, uh, my original spidey sense was they can't design and build a source measure unit of this precision for under 10 bucks. It, it, you, you just can't do it. There's, there's something else going on here. Oh, and I checked out uh, this part here. It's actually the same as down here. It's an OP2976. So they've reused that of uh, a general, like a really expensive um, general purpose amp. I, yeah, um, these are, these all look 
genuine. And, and this is the kind of stuff you'd expect to find in a precision source measure unit like this. A TLC2252, that's just a, a dual op amp, nothing special going on there. Uh, they're using another one down there as well. Linear tech, right? Linear tech don't make cheap parts. A 1446. These, these are our DACs. This makes sense. Dual 12-bit rail-to-rail micro power DAC. So that makes sense. This is our source unit. It's got to generate uh, the voltage. Right, so that's not capable of external voltage reference. You can see the internal zener in there and you can't override that. So that's our voltage reference and our DAC. So then they'd just be buffering that to go to the output. Yeah, but right there, how much does that cost? Tell us the price, son. <laughs> Look at this. It's, it's a $10 plus part. Just this part alone costs more than this instrument. There's something going on here. They are not making a profit on this. These, these are like off the back of a truck. They're, they're surplus. They're abandoned. The company went out of business. Somebody bought them up for pennies on the dollar. Pallets and pallets worth. And it doesn't explain why so many different vendors are carrying this thing though. 46, I think you can get it in different grade variants depending upon the spec of the thing. So it's not the absolute accuracy of that. They'd be trimming that baby. It's the PPMs. Oh, okay, 0.1 least significant bit per degree C. Okay, they're not gonna give it to you in uh, PPMs, are they? No. But anyway, that's a pretty schmick part, and that's where it gets its schmick performance. To get this for under 10 bucks delivered is remarkable just for that, just for that chip and that DAC. Okay, down in this corner, LM317, nothing happening there. 7660, that's just a voltage inverter. Of course it is, you can tell by the two caps there. 1009, sorry, that's an I on the end, not a 1. That's a Linear Tech 1009 voltage reference. Ah, there it is. I've done videos on this. It's not the absolute accuracy, 0.2%. It's how, what's the Tempco? That would be for the analog to digital uh, converter for the measure part of it because we've already seen the one that's used inside the uh, DAC. So once again, this would be available in different ratings. PPM, we're talking 15 PPM. You know, I'm not going to write home to my mum about it, but geez, in this sort of class instrument, you know, <laughs> for this price, fantastic. Couple of Yankee bucks. So depending on the grade, yeah. So I think we've looked at all the major parts on there and you add up those, not including all the, the case and the LCD and all the, all the rest of it, um, all the other parts on here. This is a $30, $40 bomb, something like that. The, the resistors, by the way, MELFs, you know, I'm a MELF fanboy. There you go. So where they've got them from, we don't know. So they're obviously part of the precision measurement part of this it's only got a fixed 10 volt range that's it it makes it easy you don't need all multiple ranges so you don't really need those precision uh you know ceramic divider networks or anything like that you don't need anything fancy pantsy there that's just a fixed uh input scale there so they're using probably some you know 10 ppm resistors in there yeah why they've got the reference over here like this and that looks like it's it's for I can't see what else it'd be for. Well, you could use it for your multimeter, part of it, you know, but the multimeter's just meh. So it's obviously, they're using that for the uh, analog to digital converter up here. So that's a layout thing. But anyway, you add up the cost of all this, uh, the multimeter chipsets and the LCD chipsets, you know, but there's a dollar there. Um, you know, you add all these up, you can't possibly make this thing, let alone sell it for under 10 US dollars, let alone sell it and ship it. And there's half a dozen shippers out there. So here's all the different stores. I bought mine from uh, my Cozy Life store here. 151 sold. I'll link these in down below. If you go through my link down below, it doesn't cost you anything, but I uh, do get a commission on AliExpress commission. It's actually really quite decent. So yeah, um, I'd, I'd recommend you buy two of these just so that you can keep, like compare them. At $8.70, including shipping, 182 US dollars, but other ones are 9.95, 10.95, 10 bucks, nine bucks, 10 bucks, nine bucks, 10 bucks. All got different stock. This one's got 132 pieces available. This one's got 332. This one's got 800 pieces, <laughs> which these will be going down and down, these stock <laughs> as people watch this video, because everyone's going to be buying one of these. And you can get two of them for the free shipping. Options, once you go above two, it's generally you will pay for 
ship it too. But so there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't just buy two of these. You get a precision voltage and current source. So I'm not going to test it over, uh, you know, put it in a thermal chamber, test it over performance. Maybe if you want to see a second video, give it a thumbs up and I, you know, let me know in the comments down below and I might, uh, you know, do some more with this. I've only got the one meter. It's the same and then they're all the same no-name one. But if you search for the AMP X1, $219, $273. So this is, this is the genuine one. Look. It's got the model up there, the AMP X1. Is that being rubbed out down there as well? <laughs> it's, it's dodgy as. Anyway, 219 US dollars. You go buy this on eBay. It's it's the same price on eBay, like 220 US dollars, and people are buying these things not knowing. Well, <laughs> that you can buy them for one tenth, no, one twentieth on AliExpress. There's no reason not to get one of these. Get them before they sell out. This has got to just be a one-off thing. Old stock, they didn't sell. The company, I don't know, are AMO meter still in business? I got no idea. Anyway, that is just remarkable. No, they haven't cut costs in the manufacturer. This, I mean, sure, this is not like a Fluke 725 multifunction process calibrator, right? It's not, it's not in the same class, but 0.02% plus two or plus four digits and it seems to meet that spec yeah the thing seems a bit flaky i i've had issues the firmware i've had issues the digits didn't uh weren't displaying correctly at one point didn't get that on camera and, and it, it seems a little bit dodgy um so and it seems to date from 2015 and yet 29th week 2015 so it looks like all of this stock could date to that 2015 there so that would make sense. Maybe they just, you know, they made a hundred thousand of these things and they just didn't sell uh, at, you know, the 200 plus US dollar price point. And they've just been dribbling them out and maybe a whole bunch of they just wider went under or they just cleared them out and said, here they are. Or maybe they had pallets of them at the Shenzhen market and all these little stores came along and went, oh yeah, we'll buy those for, you know, two bucks each and we'll sell them for, 10 bucks or eight bucks or whatever. I, it's remarkable. Anyway, it's worth picking one up just for shits and giggles, really. As I said, get two of them so that you can use to compare each other and you can make sure they're still within spec. So you don't really need like calibration equipment like me. If you get two of these and you hook them up to each other, one source in one measuring and vice versa, and they both measure the same, then you can be pretty confident that that's going to be bang on. And then uh, you can uh, then over time, you can compare them again, make sure they don't. And you can see if it drifts or not. And you can be pretty confident that this is a nice little voltage and current limited voltage and current source. And the multimeter is like, nah, uh, whatever. That's the AMO meter AMP X1. That is the biggest bargain I've ever seen. Grab them because I'm sure yeah, sorry, by the time you watch this video, they could all be sold out. Anyway, if anyone does know the story of this thing and what went on with this, doesn't look like a clone of the AMO meter, why that number's been rubbed off and start, look, this one here doesn't even have the process calibrator thing at the top. It doesn't look to be using fake parts in this thing. It looks like these parts are, you know, pretty expensive inside this thing. It's okay, it's not the best design and build quality in the world, but it's an order of magnitude under what this thing should cost. That that 200 US dollars, 100 to 200 US dollars is easily what this thing should be selling for. So check it out. Anyway, if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss in the YouTube comments or on the over on the EV blog forum, the place for test and measurement gear. Anyway, watching this video and this meters are already gone, and but I just watched it. It's because my uh, patrons over on Patreon and uh, my e forum supporters, they got to see this video first and they got first dibs. So, yeah, sorry. Should be a supporter, I guess. Anyway, catch you next time. Hello.